Hello scholars, my name is Dr. Kara Stillen and the goal of this channel is to make academic subjects easier to understand. In the last video we covered autism spectrum disorder. In this video we're going to cover attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, ADHD. So let's begin. In the past you may have heard the acronym ADD as well as ADHD. As of the fifth edition of the DSM, psychologists now diagnose all issues as ADHD. The hyperactivity component can show physically, but it can also show within the brain, as in somebody's brain is tending to be more hyperactive in its thoughts. When an individual is diagnosed with ADHD, the first component is the inattention this inattention will interfere with a person's student life, work life, or with issues at home. We have to have six of the following criteria or symptoms for at least six months in order for a person to be diagnosed with ADHD. Now here are the six plus symptoms. Number one, not being able to pay attention to certain details or always making simple errors or mistakes. Number two, having trouble paying attention to lectures, people talking, or someone reading something. Number three, they have a difficult time listening to someone who is talking with them for a long period of time. Their mind tends to wander. Number four, has trouble following instructions or has trouble finishing projects, especially school projects, or they have trouble finishing projects at work. Number five, they struggle with organizing tasks, meaning they have trouble with messiness, um, trying to put things together, holding on to material, or they have poor management skills given their own time. Number six, they tend not to choose or like activities that take quite a bit of time to complete. Number seven, they'll often misplace things like their keys, their wallet, their purse, their schoolwork, glasses, cell phones, etc. Number eight, can become easily distracted by others in the room, especially if they're moving around or talking. Number nine, may forget to complete daily activities that are expected of that individual, whether it be their chores or their homework. Now comes in the hyperactivity or impulsivity component of the diagnosis. The individual must have six of the following components in a six months period of time. If the individual is 17 or older, then five of the symptoms must be present. The individual squirms in their seat or fidgets with their hands and feet. Number two, will get up from their seat often instead of working on their homework or staying focused on the task. Number three, the individual might run around or climb on items. Number four, will have trouble playing or being involved in something without being loud. Number five, feels like they're on the go or driven by a motor where they don't want to sit still for a long period of time. Number six, the individual will talk consistently. Number seven, the individual will blurt out an answer to a question before the question is asked or will interrupt. Number eight, will interrupt in the conversations of others or will start using other people's things without asking. They might take over what the other person was doing. These symptoms will also present in school and at home as well as at work. These symptoms interfere with social, emotional, academic, or occupational settings. And the symptoms are not the result of schizophrenia or another psychotic disorder. It should be specified if the ADHD is mild, moderate, or severe. ADHD begins in childhood, and these symptoms must be present in more than in one setting, including school, with friends, at home, or within the workplace. The behaviors might be minimized when the child is consistently being rewarded for certain behavior or is being consistently watched by an adult. It is normal for an individual with ADHD to have language, social development issues, as well as motor issues. They might become frustrated very easily while trying to do their work. Academic work or occupational work can be really inhibited. Those with ADHD have a higher chance of attempting suicide, especially when mood disorders or substance abuses are part of the diagnosis. ADHD occurs in 5% of the population with children and 2.5% with adults. 
Most adults tend to see ADHD with excessive talking in childhood. The disorder is most diagnosed in elementary school and symptoms seem to calm down with the majority of people as they enter adulthood or get older. Those with parents who have ADHD, the child is most likely to be diagnosed with it. The disorder is found most often in boys than it is with girls. Those individuals with untreated ADHD tend to do worse in school and tend to have problems with their peers. These children have a much higher rate of developing conduct disorder or oppositional defiant disorder. These individuals are more likely to have traffic violations, accidents, as well as injury. They also tend to partake in very risky behavior at times. One of the troubles with ADHD is when it's hard to sit down and when it's hard to work on your material with other students around, when students get up and they run around the classroom or they throw things away or they will try to sharpen their pencil, they often distract other kids that are in the room. And this makes other children a bit unhappy or upset with them, especially if they go over and they try to talk with the students as they are working. And this is why a lot of the times students with ADHD are seen unfairly given their co-workers or their, their peers because they seem like they are distracting them or, or they are getting in the way of others doing their work. And this is why sometimes they're unfairly unliked by other students because they seem to be the bad kid. Students with ADHD are definitely not the bad kid and they're definitely not stupid or dumb. Sometimes it's just this hyperactivity component that goes on within their brain or within their bodies that helps them to feel like they can't stop or slow down. So a lot of the times um, with medication or with therapy, medication, they're oftentimes given a stimulant. So for whatever reason, um, stimulants are supposed to get the body going and they're supposed to rev them up. But for whatever reason, with kids with ADHD, it actually slows their brain down. I do have a son with ADHD. Um, everybody in the house can tell when he's not medicated. He can't. I'll ask him three, four times, Kalen, Kalen, Kalen. And it's just like he's not there and can't hear me. The minute the meds are in for 20, 25 minutes, I'll say, Kalen, boom, he's listening to me right away. He can follow directions. I won't work on his schoolwork with him unless he has his medication. Now, that's not me trying to push medication on anybody. I keep him on the lowest level of medication that I possibly can because, yes, I do worry about those things. But he is a happier boy with medication. He knows he can get things done and he says he's even a better video game player because of it. So that is just my my situation with this and so I wanted to offer my own perspective on it too. Well that is the end of our video. If you like the video please click that like button and don't forget to subscribe. I hope every one of you has an amazing day and I will talk with you soon.